movie. Hello and welcome to another podcast where two people try to tell you what to think about things. Um, in this podcast, or at least in this series of podcasts, we're going to be talking about movies. And I know that's a subject that hasn't been done at nauseum. However, we are two people that enjoy doing these things, but we also enjoy seeing movies. And one of the things we hate the most is going to see a movie with high expectations and walking away wondering why it sucks so bad and why the reviews were so good. Um, specifically, today we're going to be talking about the Blair Witch Project. Now, Blair Witch is a, a movie that came out back in 1999, which feels like forever ago. Because when you watch the movie today, it feels like it was made much earlier than that. So when you hear that it came out in 1999 or close to 2000, you're like, whoa, I, I feel like that movie's been around forever, um, not just uh, 17 years. However, if you haven't heard, they just came out with a new one. Now, some of you are probably interested in seeing that movie. I and Crystal, who will be joining me here in a second, um, are two people who are very interested in seeing this movie, especially since we didn't think that the first movie, and I'm not even going to mention Blair Witch Book of Shadows because it doesn't exist, um, that the first Blair Witch movie um, actually, you know, explored all the possibilities. And, all, and, you know, we were looking for forward to a cool update, which would hopefully be a lot scarier. So I thought the first one was good, and it kind of launched that whole documentary-style horror genre. But I thought a lot more could have been done, and that it could have been a lot scarier, and I'm sure Crystal did too. However, we're going to talk to you about the new Blair Witch movie, since we just saw it last night, and we want to talk to you about what's fresh in our minds. Um, however, we do want to give you a little bit of backdrop in case you've never heard of the movie, never heard of the legend. Um, so, Crystal, what is the Blair Witch legend? Okay. So let's overemphasize legend here. Uh, so the legend begins from 1785 about a woman named Ellie Kedward who migrated from Ireland to this town then called Blair. Dirty Mick. I knew it was an Irish one. Um, and a then woman. eventually um, the locals found out that she lured children to her house and drew blood from them. Typical Irish. Yes. Then, a year later, in 1786, they essentially banished her into the woods, where she eventually, well, they just assumed that she succumbed to the elements um, while she was there. So, never really got into it, the legend, per se. Um, never really got into what they actually did to Ellie Kedward. Um, so, so, they essentially performed mob justice on this person and took her out into the woods and left her there to die. Yeah. Okay. Essentially. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pretty standard for the time. Right. So eventually uh, the townsfolk, they, they abandoned the town. Therefore, why in the movie they mentioned that the town was abandoned and then called Burkittsville. Uh, later then, or later on, uh, people would start coming in, um, living in the town, and people started disappearing, most, mostly children. Um, hence why, you know, it kind of goes back to her luring children into her house and going back to that legend. And some of the folks actually knew of this legend um, it, when they were over there. Well, I think it's important to, to emphasize or re-emphasize and continually re-emphasize None of this is true. All of what she just said is completely made up. It was a legend that was designed specifically for this movie. The reason that's important is because if you go on the internet, you will see literally dozens of pages devoted to the Blair Witch legend. All of them are fake. Every single one of them, because it doesn't exist. The people who made the film go out of their way to make the point that this is something they made up only for the fact of making the, the movie seem more realistic. Right. However, there are some weirdos out there that believe in, a, <clears throat> in the Blair Witch despite the fact that it's a well-known fact. It does not exist. It's completely made up. Um, right. So... Hopefully everybody's figured that out. What I mean is that it's not real. <laughs> so going more into the myth, 
in this fake made up story. Uh, again, like people started disappearing, mostly children. People would claim that they uh, saw a figure in the woods. Uh, there was even a claim of a drowning of a little girl and then the, the water would seem a little bit different um, to the townsfolk. And then eventually, and I'm not going to go into the specifics, but eventually the other focal point of this story is uh, the gentleman named Rustin Parr. In 1940, uh, 40s, he was an it's occupant. It's fake. It doesn't really matter what the year is. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> leading more, well, I'm not going to say more recent, but 1940s, uh, there's a gentleman who occupied a house on top of a hill. Which kind of goes back to uh, what this podcast is about, right? We were talking about the movie, right? This I fake forgot. story. What is this podcast yeah. about now? <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the movie, uh, they do mention this little house, right? And, and it kind of surrounds to at the end of the movie. They um, lead up to this house. So, Rustin Parr actually had well after disappearance of children there were seven disappearances around in the 1940s of children again fake just to re-emphasize that in case someone goes into the middle of this podcast um and it, no one knew in in the 1940s what happened to these children they just disappeared and then finally Rustin Parr goes into the local supermarket or market in Burkittsville and says that he is finished just claims that he's finished. He doesn't specify what, which leads the police or led the police to be a little suspicious of what, what what's finished, what's going on. And they go up to his house on top of the hill in the Black Forest or the, is that what it's, the Black Forest? You're telling the legend. I know, <laughs> right? I think it's called the, the sure. forest, the Black Forest. And they find seven bodies in his house. And he proclaims that, Again, fake, <laughs> proclaims that someone made him do it, right? And there was this uh, woman that he saw at the end of the woods, and he followed that woman, and then eventually these sights or the, the this visual of this woman started disappearing, um, but the voices stayed in his head, which led him to kill these seven children, and then actually there was an eighth, but they was let go right i mean there's this extra child that though the witch was like well you're finished on the seventh child eight children <laughs> seven the, of which were killed this voice <laughs> said go to the local market and say that you're finished so it told him to actually do all these things um it's kind of like and that, that voice kind of, i hear when it tells me to go to chick-fil-a it's like you're hungry go to chick-fil-a i don't think that's the same yes voice. strange voice will do <laughs> i don't think that's the same voice yeah, maybe uh that sounds like you're hangry. It's that hangry? like a hangry voice. No, hangry would be me flipping tables over <laughs> and rampaging towards Chick Fil A. Right. <laughs> um, so, so I mean, that's that's pretty much it. So uh, did the townspeople kill this guy? I actually didn't get that far. Okay, so well, actually, I know that. Wait, actually, there's a trial, you're, but I didn't get as far <laughs> further than that. Did the glove? Fit? I lost. Did I lost interest after. I lost interest after okay. reading that. So it's all fake, the good right? part about this is that that's the history lesson for this movie because it really doesn't matter because the trial wasn't real, the guy wasn't real, the right, circumstances right, right. weren't real. None of it's real. However, the thing that was real was that a movie was made about this so-called fake legend called The Blair Witch. And The Blair Witch is a movie in which three people, there's only three cast members in this movie, uh, Heather Donahue, Michael Williams, and Josh Leonard go into the woods in an attempt to basically find historical evidence for this, this historical event according to the movie. Now, in the movie, they treat this legend as if it actually happened so even though it's fake in the movie you have to suspend belief and realize that they're trying to make a documentary the three of them on on the belief that this actually occurred in the forest so the beginning of the movie gives you a quick and we'll get into the new Blair Witch movie but I think it's important to know where the old one starts because they kind of connect to each other in the first Blair Witch movie 
the first caption that you see before the movie even starts is it says this is a uh, uh, basically this is footage that was found in 1994 in the woods um, basically by these three people who once they went into wood to the woods to try and prove the Blair Witch myth never were seen again so the movie is already uh, uh, taking place in the past so nothing that you're watching happened in real time at least not real time in the movie time it's just it's found footage so it'd be as if you went into the attic found some old videos and started watching them so it's a documentary style and the big thing about this movie at the time was this the first movie to make a horror film like it was a documentary and we've all seen way too many of them you know where you have the, the camera view and it's kind of being thrown around and you're wondering why the guy doesn't drop the stupid camera while the axe murderer is chasing him. He just keeps it going. Well, you know, that's just, that's just how the movie is. Well, this was the first movie to do that. So if you don't like those movies, you can punch one of the cast members in the face. But if you do like them, uh, this is where it began. So first movie, three people go in the woods. They disappear. They're never heard of again. 2016 Blair Witch movie the brother of the only female in the movie is still looking for his lost sister after 17 years after 17 years yes. yes he's still looking for his lost sister and he's convinced based on some new evidence that has been provided to him via the internet and we all know the internet to be a trusty source of information um he believes that she is still alive or is somewhere in the Black Woods. And now you've got me saying it, Black Woods. I don't even know if it's called Black The Black Woods. Forest. The Black Forest. But, the Black Forest. But here's the thing, that video. Um, Which one? The the little YouTube clip, clip okay, that well, he brings up. Okay, we haven't up. gotten there. We haven't okay. gotten there yet. Okay, I'm but, sorry. I'm jumping well, you, ahead well, explain here. explain that part. Explain that. Well, he's watching it. So the, so the movie begins with him watching this video clip which is essentially from if you watch the original movie you would kind of get an idea of when that clip took place um but he pauses it in the middle of the youtube video because there's a reflection of the person holding the camera and i'm sitting i'm, I'm in the theater and i'm i'm watching the same exact thing um this this little clip that he pauses on and i'm thinking how do you how can you tell that that's because it was so it, it the person's running you pause it it looked blurry how do you know that was his sister no uh, I mean, well I, I don't know if he so i didn't think it was his sister okay just a little bit of background it, somebody he so the brother is looking for his sister somebody hits him up and says hey i found this video near the forest and uh, when I played it, it had this footage, and he shows it to the brother via YouTube, um, and the brother watches it, and you know he's analyzing the footage for any sign that it might be his sister, and in the footage, it shows somebody, because we can't see them, running up a set of old abandoned stairs in this decrepit-looking house, and they're running past the mirror, and when, he runs, and when the person runs past the mirror, there's a reflection. And he pauses there because he thinks that the reflection might be his sister. Um, why that gives him hope that his sister is still alive, I'm not sure because that video is old. <laughs> it's not like it was, you know, yesterday and then, you know, he found it. Um, it's an old video, but I think it's the first evidence that anybody has had since the, the disappearance. The disappearance. <clears throat> what does strike me as odd, and this is where we... <laughs> This is where the, the movie, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it, starts to fall apart a little bit, is that they make no mention of the videos that we watched for the first movie. So the first movie is based on found footage in which the original three people go into the woods and are never seen again. What are we watching if not found footage from the first movie? Because in this new Blair Witch, they make it sound like there was never any evidence taken or found after they did an exhaustive search of the forest to they didn't find anything related to his sister or her two companions that were with her and my thinking is well, 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 the whole movie 
the very first movie we watched was all footage that was supposedly found by someone related to these three people that go into the woods. I'm just curious, what happened to that footage? And why weren't they using that more as a reference? Because that tells the whole story. Um, so that's just a, that's just a side note that that occurred to me that's as I'm little, thinking about this. It's a little too much. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe it's you know well it's eight fifteen in the morning here. So uh, wait, no, it's not. It's nine twenty three. Sorry, gotta fix my laptop clock. Um, anywho, he focuses in on this image, which looked like a haggard old woman to me, but apparently to him it looked like it could be his sister. So he gets he does the only thing that any responsible person could do. He gathers three of his best friends to go with him into the woods to find out where this tape was found and then proceed to go after and, and try and discover his sister's possible location. They want to find the house that this video looks like it was shot in. Um, and a couple things uh, have to uh, be taken into consideration. One... One of his friends is going to turn this search into a documentary for her own, you know, video project. Mm -hmm. And the other two are, one is his best friend since he was young, and another one is his best friend's girlfriend. So you got, a, you know, four basically weirdos going into the woods. The difference between this expedition and the one before is the technology. So... The last movie supposedly was filmed in 1994. This one is filmed in 2016, and we've made a few advances since 1994. You want to explain some of the technology that they uh, bring along with them? Uh, well, they have these headsets that they put on, and it has a camera attached to it. They don't they even have look a like drone. headsets. They're like, they're like Bluetooth earpieces with cameras. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're so... tiny. It's crazy. It is super tiny, um, and they have a drone that they fly up in the air as well to kind of get uh, coverage of the area and, you know, see what's out there, um, ho hoping to find this house, because that was the focus, right? So the whole thing was him trying to find that house, and nobody could find that house. There was search parties, and and I'm kind of going a little no, no, differently yeah. with the topic here, but... They, they, at the beginning, I mean, they even mentioned at the beginning of the movie that they had a search party go out and there was like, I don't know how many people, but there was a lot of people that went out when he was younger. So the person that's going out with his friends, when he was younger, they did have search parties for his sister. Um, and then they never found that house. Uh, so that's what they're trying to find when they go out there. But yeah, the, the technology they use, they have tons of cameras and these little Bluetooth headsets with a, a camera attached to it, as well as um, the drone that goes out. I don't remember if there was any other technology. They have GPS technology. GPS. They have so, GPS. So like in the 1994 film, they only have cameras and a map. And only one person in that group had a map. And the big thing in the first film is the map gets lost. And then that kind of explains why they're kind of walking around in circles in the woods and can't find their way out. In this one... They have better technology, but I have to tell you, the technology utterly fails in almost every single way, um, except for the cameras, which makes the movie possible. Um, however, before they even get to the woods and they're able to test this, this, this new uh, uh, technology, they have to stop by the house of the guy who provided the brother the, the video, yeah. saying that, hey, I think this might be your sister because I found this. And in exchange for telling him where they found the video, he wants to be uh, he wants to be allowed to accompany them into the woods. He and his girlfriend. So now you had a party of four become a party of six. So they take these two people that they don't know, outside of the fact the one guy claims to have found a video, and he's their guide into the woods to take them to the place where he found that footage. Yeah, we can all agree there's probably some problems here. However, they don't see another way around it, so they bring them along. So, these six people go into the woods, and uh, 
they they go to the place where the guy supposedly finds the video and um, nothing much happens it really is just kind of them walking around in the woods and but it's not as bad as the first movie right the first movie there was much more walking and then you're sitting there waiting that but, is true I they mean, did speed this up because the first Blair Witch <laughs> movie it was like you were in real time watching them camp through an area Ugh. and it was pretty boring I mean there's some interesting dialogue but I mean it was it was as if somebody just took a, you know, we've all seen those home videos where you're like, I wish they would edit this because there's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't need people filming the road and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, well, that happened in the first film, not so much in the second film. But when they do finally have the first campsite, that's when things start going weird. When they can, set up camp for the first night. Can we rewind a little bit? Because... <laughs> yeah, what? Um, so before they set camp... Before okay. they set camp, they have to cross this river. So this is where they introduce a lot of the elements of the the legend, right? This fake story. Um, so they have to cross this little creek, and it's a little bu- it's a little bit above ankle deep. And while they're crossing together, this this party of six, um, one of them, which happens to be his friend's girlfriend, again, sorry for not knowing these names. And- I'm more interested in the story than really <laughs> remembering the names of these individuals. They're not important. But his best friend's <laughs> girlfriend ends up injuring herself, crossing over. And this kind of leads up to like some of the rest, because get the story as it goes by. She's Again, she's injured, so not really a good situation to be in, in this case, well, for this movie, In the Woods. So, okay, this is, this is one of those things that annoyed me throughout the entire film, was... So she's walking across this river, and she steps on a rock and, like, cuts her leg. However, it's as if the people who did the sound effects for this movie didn't have a cut leg sound effect, so they just used a bone-cracking sound effect. So it sounds like, literally, it sounds like that. Anytime she steps on that leg, it's like, it literally sounds like somebody's grabbing a, a, a bundle of twigs and snapping them. And I've cut... My legs and feet many times. Never heard that noise come out of them. Her bone's not broken, but it sounds literally like somebody's, like, just pulling apart a, 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 a bone. It's terrible. Um, and so she's crossing, and it's loud. It doesn't matter if it's underwater or whatever. She's crossing the river, and it, yeah. ah, my leg! And, you know, they go, and they help her, and they look at her, and they realize that it's just a cut. So, right. continue. So, yes, they cross over this creek, all of them, they end up bandaging her up, and she continues to walk. So she says she's fine. She continues to walk. And then they go and set camp for the night. Um, so they set up camp. Uh, there's a little thing. There's a couple of things where his friend, his best friend, couldn't put up a tent. So little quirks here and there. Uh, typical things. But, yeah, they, again, just going back to crossing over the creek, that introduced some of the elements because... In the legend, the myth, uh, they mention that a little girl drowned in that creek. And uh, little stick figures, which if you saw the first movie and saw the most recent movie, you would know what those stick figures are, where they look like a person um, started appearing. So that was kind of some of the elements from the not only the legend, but from the original the Blair Witch Project and the current because it has that extra some you know symbol that's displayed as well but yes so so they set camp and they're setting up their tents and um then do you want to go into like what happens the first night yeah so they're there the first night and of course you know everybody goes to sleep cameras off and then all of a sudden the screen goes black and then it comes back on because Obviously, when you're terrified in the middle of the night, the first thing you go for is your camera uh, because you want to make sure to capture it on film, apparently. Um, I'm being sarcastic. Anyway, so they wake up, and because they hear what sounds like trees uh, falling in the woods, I mean, it's like... And, you it's, know... I don't know. It sounded like a... Sh- uh, I don't know how to... I mean, it, it sounds like a tree, but it also sounds like a huge... like. Boom sound, but I guess... I mean, it sounds... I mean, you're not sleeping through this. Let's oh, put no, it that way. No. It doesn't sound like something a human being is making. 
and they wake up and they realize that the guy that asked to come along on their trip is missing. His girlfriend said he went to go uh, use the restroom and that uh, he's been gone a long time and his, that his name's Lane. So I'm Lane. pulling Sorry. up the cast right Sorry, now. Yeah. So it says Lane. Lane wants to Lane. go use the bathroom and hasn't been seen. So a couple of them decide to go out, take a look for him. They're walking around. They're hearing all this snapping and cracking around them. It sounds like somebody's walking through the woods. And suddenly Lane appears out of nowhere, disheveled, um, asking if they heard the sounds too. And they say, well, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, what am I deaf? And um, they all head back to camp. The next morning they wake up and these little twigs, these little stick figures... Um, that hanging. you've probably seen in the... Pre I mean, if you look at the movie poster, one is there's a huge one that's on the front of the cover, um, are hanging from the trees. And they're nothing special. They're twigs wrapped in twine hanging from the tree. And they're all over the place. There's like, you know, 15 of them, maybe. And, of course, everybody starts freaking out. And, you know, the, the best friend's girlfriend decides that she can't take anymore because, you know, all that cracking noise is in the woods. And... The, the, the appearance of twigs out of nowhere, they decide to abandon the documentary after one night of being in the woods. They pack up, they head out, and as they're heading out, one of the members of the group recognizes that... Lisa. So, Lisa, sorry. Lisa, who's <laughs> kind of doing all the main filming of the group, recognizes that Lane, the guy they brought along, his backpack, out, it's sticking out of his backpack, is the same kind of twine that was used to make those little stick figures. And so an argument ensues. They look into his backpack and they find all the elements for making those things and they realize that, hey, this guy set them up in a sense. He, uh, he uh, essentially was making things happen in order to make the legend appear more true than it really is. Of course, he denies this. And he says he's sorry, but he was only trying to, you know... Protect he said, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how. He said that the only way to prove the legend was real was by faking it, which, let's think about that for a second. But anyway, he gets kicked out. The two, the girlfriend and Lane, the both of them, they say, hey, you know what? We're done. Get out of here. Because they don't know their way back because they were trusting this guy to get them back to their cars. Right. And since he's a liar and he doesn't know how he got to the place he did because he made it all up, including the video apparently, um, they send him and his girlfriend off by themselves and say, you know what, find your own way back. I felt so bad for them. I didn't. I, mean, I did. Um, I felt bad for the girlfriend, not for Lane. Well, Lane was kind of a sleazy guy anyway. Any... I mean, he was like the shiftiest guy in the group, so it was like you knew if there was going to be a person that was going to betray the situation it was going to be him and a lineup you'd pick him out and be like yep that's the guy he looked like the judas already um but they didn't have a gps or anything so they just left him lost essentially they didn't know where they were i would at least escort them to i don't know to their cars where they parked so after this happens after they abandon two of their members to the woods hilarity ensues <laughs> Um, and by that, I mean, that's when the terror really starts. Um, but this is also where the movie just starts to borrow heavily from the first film. Because everything that happened essentially in the first film kind of gets repeated in this one. So they split, what they part ways, they start walking. Uh, and this is the, the brother and his two friends. They start walking, and after a few hours, they come back to, to the, the same campsite that they'd left hours before. So right. And every single one of these movies, it's only supposed to be a hour or two, a three hour tour to uh, to their you know to their original location where they are you know where they park their cars, and it always turns into this all day event. Every you know hour or so, the guy's like, "No, we're almost there. It's just a little further," and they end up back in the campsite. We forgot about the two o'clock thing. The 2 p.m.? Okay, well, yeah, I mean, you can include that. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. So, it, it, apparently... And this is one thing that they couldn't explain. Um, before they banished the two other people, him and his girlfriend, Lane, and Talia? Anyways. So, after they accused the two people of basically making all the noises and creating those little stick figures, they, when they wake up the next day... 
um, that they wake up at 2 p.m. Um, and not realizing how how in the world like this, they don't know how they would wake up all at the same time at 2 p.m. Uh, sleeping that late, so no one could actually really you know justify what, how that happened. Well, and the big deal there is is that they only have so many hours of daylight left. And so the later in the day they start camping, the closer it is to nighttime, and bad things apparently happen at night in the Black so, Woods yeah. Forest. Yes, yeah, so Black <laughs> Forest. So when they basically make a circle, even using their GPS, they get heavily confused of why they're in the same spot and they decide to camp there because it's already getting dark after yeah. a few hours yeah. since they started walking when it was two, you know, you know, daylight starts going away and they need to make camp. So they decide to camp there that night. So they're camping in the exact same place they camped the night before. Yeah. This time, more stuff happens. Um, and I'm trying to make sure, remember, I, I can get... This, this is, again, where the technology doesn't seem to play any relevant role whatsoever. So the GPSs stop working almost immediately. Can't get good signal. They can't accurately predict where they're at or even when they can it just leads them back to the same place then they send the drone up the drone does absolutely nothing for them other than tell them that hey we're in the middle of the woods there's because, no there's no roads so yeah that's what no, they mentioned they're like i can't see roads i can't see anything but trees but then i'm thinking that's what they first saw when yeah. they first flew the drone yeah. up like they saw the same exact footage yeah above. they never yeah they never yeah. i mean the drone like, the drone is useless all right. it does is tell them that they're lost. Um, and then and, the signal goes yeah. lost. And, yeah, and, and of course yeah. the drone gets taken out pretty quickly because, you know, as soon as they want to do something different with it, you know, to maybe spot a landmark or something, the drone spirals out of control and is almost never heard from again, and in a functional way anyway. Yeah, um, till later on. Yeah, and then the two people that they left earlier, Lane and his girlfriend, Talia... This is at night, just yeah. so they, they know, because after the drone, like, not much is happening other than them going to bed, and then them hearing noises, and that's when... Yeah, so they hear yeah. more noises, they think the same thing is happening again, and they they turn lights on, they're looking around the woods, and Talia and Lane show up, and they're completely disheveled, covered in mud, Oh yeah, and they're, they're just, they look gross. Twigs in their hair, yeah. leaves in their hair, like, they've been there for weeks. It's, yeah. It seemed like that, but it really wasn't that. But they, 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 they are, are paranoid. They show up and they're like, are you who you, we think you are? And they're like, yes, what are you talking about? We only left you like a couple hours ago. They're like, yeah. for us, it's been like five days since we've seen That's you. Um, so time seems to be uh, different for each group in the woods. So for them, it's been five days. For the brother and his friend, it's only been, you know, several hours. So... That gets weird. And then he ends up leaving, but Talia, the girlfriend, decides to stay with the rest of the group that yeah. was camping there. So Lane's going both crazy. Yeah, yeah, Lane's, Lane's going, going crazy. crazy. He thinks that, you know, there's, there's something weird Conspiracy going on. Or yeah, something. he leaves. The girlfriend's like, screw <laughs> this, trick. I'm going with them because yeah. they look like they're better off than we are. And so she stays with them, and Lane goes off into the woods. Um, at the same time, the girl who's foot sounded like it was hacked off in the <gasps> water um her infection is getting worse her boyfriend um, checks on yeah it. checks on it and there's some weird things that go on there but she is essentially out of the game she's well what about the muscle spasm yeah right? i know but i don't feel like yeah, that's you know this is weird just there's some weird things going on with yeah. her injury but anyway she's out she's essentially you know bedridden um the boyfriend the the, the brother's best friend Decides Here. to go get uh, some firewood. Goes into the woods. Oh, yeah. And hears noises all around him. Panics. And a tree falls on him, essentially. And all we see is that uh, as he's laying down, apparently injured uh, by this tree, something comes and grabs him. And all we yeah, see is, the shadow. from the camera angle, him his body just being dragged past the screen. And that's the end of him. The two yeah. remaining functional uh, people, is it Amy and the brother? Ashley. Ashley and the brother. 
and decide to James, Ashley, and James. No, Lisa. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Okay. I'm going to do it my injured. way. I'm going to do Ashley it my way. No, 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 no. We're doing she's it my way. So the brother and the other girl who's not injured is as uh, they decide to go look for yeah. the friend, and they can't find him. All they find is his flashlight. And oh yeah, the walkie-talkie. Yeah, they find the yeah. walkie-talkie, which but, again doesn't do anything. Um, that's another piece of technology that we forgot to mention. They have walkie-talkies this yeah. time so they can communicate to each other at distance. Doesn't work, ever. Not even once. Um, once they break out of the, 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 the planning stage. So, they don't find the guy. They come back. The girlfriend who's injured is going even crazier. She's, you know, freaking out because she doesn't, you know, doesn't want to be there, doesn't understand what's going on. All kinds of weird stuff starts happening. Um, they wake up the next day and there are those twigs again. Those, but those different. Sticks. Yeah, so it's obvious these aren't made by Elaine or Talia because these things are huge. They're varying in size. Some of them are gigantic. Some of them Mm -hmm. are small. And they're literally Weird shapes, like twigs, and covered with like different, um, like it's just wrapped differently as well. So it's not the same as the wrapping as Lane's was. Yeah, so the girl that's injured starts freaking out even more, (laughs) thinks that Talia is up to her and her boyfriend's old tricks, yeah. which is trying to scare them by creating these things, grabs one of the twigs. That Talia, that Talia notices is, that it has her hair yeah, wrapped so around Talia it. Grabs, so she's freaking out. Yeah, so Talia grabs one of these twigs from the from the from that's hanging, realizing that the twine is her hair, and she's trying to figure out how that happened. And then Ashley... Yeah, the Ashley injured. smacks it out of her hand, accusing her of essentially setting them up. And when she does that, Talia is body is smashed to pieces. Yeah. Well, she breaks the same it. way. Yeah, yeah she, she she breaks it. So it's like almost like a voodoo doll. Yeah, that's what like. that that's yeah. like, that's right. what I had with that thought. You didn't that invent that. You didn't invent no, the voodoo doll. No, aspect. I'm talking about. I thought about that yeah. in the movies when we yeah. watched it. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were like, well, that no. was. My oh yeah, I idea. invented yeah. it really. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So. Talia's dead. She's not coming back. Mm-hmm. She's she's been broken in half. Everybody freaks at this point because now the wood seems to come alive. Um, tents start flying in the air, and it sounds like some kind of creature's chasing them. So they all flee in different directions into yeah. the woods. And it's nighttime. So it's nighttime. It, it's continuous nighttime. There's no daylight at this point. And then, I mean, there's when they wake up in the morning, her alarm goes off. Yeah. And it says, that she's like, she's confused because she's looking at her phone. It says, that's weird. It's 7 a.m. and it's still dark out or something like that. Yeah, so... And that's, that's around the time when they found all these twigs and they're all freaking out. And it's still dark time and then they're being chased by this noise, but they don't see it, but they hear this loud noise basically chasing after them and yeah. they're freaking out and they're and, split up. And that's something to just kind of focus on real quick. That is one difference from this movie than from the first Blair Witch Project movie is that... It's perpetually night. After you get past the first day of them hiking to the place and, and setting up base camp, it's almost night all the time. Um, which, in the first movie, there was, you know, was daytime, day, nighttime, night, daytime. Yeah. This time, it seems like there's never any sunlight. And so they're always walking around in, in the, dark. the dark, in the woods, not knowing what's going on. Right. Flashlight going in and out. Yeah. yeah, so different situation this time. There's, there's very little visibility. So they all run out panicking in different directions thinking something's chasing them uh ashley who's the injured one of her party runs until she finds a a light source that she doesn't recognize and determines and once she gets closer she realizes it's the downed drone that's stuck in the tree right and she's gonna attempt to dislodge it for the purpose i'm guessing of putting it back up into the air so they can i i I tried to i i I don't know what the point of that was. It's because... dark unless these drones can fly into the air and see at night that I'm not aware of, at least this one. What is getting it into the air going to do? I don't know either. And how was she able to climb that tree? She was she couldn't even run. So yeah, this is that this is like... this is one of those situations where the 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 amount of of uh, attention the injury was getting doesn't seem to play out well with what she's able to do capability wise so she can barely walk it seems like but once things start going crazy she amazingly finds this renewed strength 
to the right. point where she can climb this tree, which I'm not even sure I could climb at full strength, uh, let alone with an injured foot. And you'd have to see this foot. I mean, it is not like a little laceration. I mean, there are things going on in this leg that you would not believe. Anyway, she's able to climb the tree fairly high, trying to dislodge this drone, and she overreaches and she falls and same something thing. grabs at her. Yeah, something right. grabs at her. So similar to what happened to her boyfriend, you know, all we see is that, you know, she gets grabbed and gets taken away. That takes us to the final two remaining members of this once strong party of six. James so, and Lisa. Yeah, James and Lisa. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> they're running around the woods and they stumble upon, completely by accident, the house that the they've house. been looking for this yeah. whole time, which is the exact same house from the first movie. Yep. He goes in there because he looks up and at the window he sees a flashlight, it appears, through through the window. Maybe. And he yeah, and he hears a voice which sounds like his sister. Yep. Or he at least thinks it is. And Ashley or I say Ashley, Lisa. So she continues to tell him not to go in there. So she doesn't even go with him. He goes by himself. Yeah, so he storms into the building. Right. She remains outside because she's like, I ain't going in there. I I wouldn't either. No, well, I mean, nobody (laughs) would. uh, Because, you know, it's obvious to everybody that his sister's dead. 17 years later. Yeah, he thinks she's still alive and that... Anyway, you know, this is... (laughs) This is a movie. Hope burns eternal. (laughs) Anyway, he uh, goes and... uh, uh, inside the the house and is prowling around in various rooms it's obvious that the place is sinister because there are all kinds of noises happening he even sees shadowy figures going from one room to the next meanwhile lisa who is outside starts freaking out she hears things and then she sees and this is i think this is the first time we actually see it right I think. It is the right it. word because yeah. we're not sure what we see. We see some skinny, very pale, long armed, long legged, uh, weird it, creature. It's like a mannequin. Like I, I don't. Anyways, it's like the Slender it, Man. It was in like a Slender wood. Man. Yeah. yeah. In but the this, woods. this goes back because then um, it made me think of that. Kind of makes sense because at the beginning, Lane. The extra straggler um, that came on the trip, who ended up leaving the party and going crazy after Talia had stayed, um, he mentioned the legend was actually a little bit different because they said that they burned her in the woods, or and then the other story was about how they hung her up or they put her up in the trees and they put rocks as weights to weigh her arms and legs down. So it kind of made sense about why they made the creature or it look like that yes. with the long arms and long, long legs. Let's just yeah, go so back they then. modify the legend a little bit in this movie by they adding did. new elements they, they to did. make it sound like they, they racked this woman prior right. to her being killed. Yeah. Um, so, when so she, she has disfigured right. portion, yeah. proportions. Yeah, and when Lisa sees this creature... She and freaks it out. It's actually goes, a scary scene because you see like this, scary. this really, uh, you can't, you, it's one of those things that happens so quickly you're not quite sure what you saw. All you know is that you saw a, a, a somewhat human being looking thing Staring quickly at appear you. behind a yes. tree and then hide and you can't see it. And so she freaks out Goes and realizes that, you know what, screw this, the house might be the best place <laughs> for me. Runs inside and now she's looking for James. Yeah. James is looking for his sister. James is seeing figures in corners, and as he goes into different rooms, he sees Peter, the, yeah, so his best friend. His best friend that disappeared. And then it disappears. So he's seeing Peter. Who else did he see? Um, he sees like a witch looking creature, too. Yeah, like, like he's seeing a figure go from room to room, and yeah. he thinks it's his sister, and he's following it into these rooms where they these figures disappear or he gets locked into this room while on on the other hand lisa is opening doors and she's going through different rooms to find james and then she runs into lane yeah so crazy lane who (laughs) see lane not only tried to fabricate some of the events in this movie but then uh was cast out of the group only to find the group again and then leave the group quickly afterwards thinking it was a trap is now in this house he looks even worse than he did before he's got a full grown beard so you can tell he's been there a while and it sounds like he is yeah he does it sounds like he is I mean he's gone full Taliban in there and it it sounds like he is uh, uh, 
some way uh, subservient to the to the Blair Witch because he says I have to do what the Blair Witch tells me. So he grabs Lisa, opens what appears to be a cellar door, and throws her down into it and closes the door. This uh, down this cellar, the only way out appears to be this very narrow tunnel underground that leads who knows where. But oh Lisa gosh. realizes. Yeah, the Lisa. Thing was yeah, Lisa disgusting. realizes this is the only way to get out because he's apparently locked the door above, and right. it's too high up for her to climb. Um, so she starts squeezing her way through this tiny, narrow tunnel. It looks like a like something like a, a, a prisoner would would carve out trying to escape Alcatraz or something. I mean, it is this tiny. If you've ever seen Shawshank Redemption, this looks like the kind of tunnel that he used to escape. So he's she's going through this. And she gets to the other end and almost immediately is attacked by Lane, Ugh. which she breaks out a pocket knife and stabs him, and then Lane is dead. So Lane's Woo-hoo. out of the picture. She goes a few feet and finds James, who stumbles into her. The two of them... In the wanted... attic, right? They're, I mean, they're in the is attic, yeah. the point that they were in the attic? Yeah, then I the... think so. What was that weird scene? Like, when they're in the attic and they're finally reunited, there was this, through the cracks of the house, there was this light that came through. Yeah, that what? was a weird thing. What, did they? Did the witch nope. make it light? Like, uh, I, I was a so little this... confused. Was it daytime and then she fast-forwarded it to night? Like, so this film <sighs> does bring, introduces a lot of things that you're just like, I, <laughs> they don't explain it. It just happens. Right. So... They're going through the attic, and all of a sudden, you know, they're looking for ways out of this building while they're in the attic, um, because they can tell something's right behind them. They've closed the door, hopefully holding back whatever it is, and they're trying to, you know, search the walls, looking for a way out, and this blinding light pours through the cracks of this attic, um, and then quickly goes away. For for a quick sec, I was thinking, oh. I hope they don't bring aliens or something weird. Well, I thought into it was this. like a search party, like a helicopter, like a helicopter search. Because I would have been like, mad <laughs> if they did aliens. Yeah, yeah. Like, ugh, like American Horror Story. One of the reasons why I hated season two was because they started introducing the aliens yeah, at the end. So yeah. I was gonna get, I was actually anticipating to be yeah. disappointed once more. Yeah. But anyways, they were back going to all the X Files <laughs> with the I Want yeah. to Believe going on. Figured Mulder or Scully he would bust right, in. Right, right. Anyway, <laughs> hey, so, I, I like them though. I like I them. I just didn't like how every story had to involve aliens. I liked it better <laughs> when it was about, you know, weird monsters. Anywho, Anyways. so they, uh, James quickly determines that this is the Blair Witch that's following him and instructs Lisa, basically tells, says that they both can have to look at the corner because something about the legend and Right. where the kids were being killed and prior to being killed they had to face the corner um is she is, could not attack you if you did not look her in the eye kind of like a medusa type yeah. thing like if you didn't stare her in the eyes or looked at it then you would you would be safe yeah well it was weird because they just kind of determined that's what it is there's nothing that really says that's how her power works right but, but they, it seemed to work for him because she didn't, she, it, didn't do anything until they looked at her. So they both face the corner and nothing's happening. Lisa's freaking out. Yeah, Lisa's freaking out and they both realize, hey, as long as they don't look at her, they, they, they're they relatively right. safe in the sense they're not going to be killed right away. James says something on, like, it seems like James is talking to someone. Yeah. And Lisa's wondering, well, who are you talking to? And it, it, apparently it's James' sister, right? Or he says, he apologizes to Lisa for saying, I'm so sorry for bringing you guys out here. Um, so he says these words and then he hears a voice and then he looks behind him, looking at this creature. Um, essentially the tr- creature tricked him to thinking, well, we're, we're thinking this, right? I don't know if that's actually Well, they're both happened. facing the corner. James starts talking to himself and Lisa's like, who are you talking to? And yeah. He's like, you know, you, you get the impression that he thinks he's talking to his sister and he quickly turns around because he thinks that his sister is behind him and is promptly killed. Right. Lisa uses the camera. Who's still holding a camera? Right. Of course. Who's still holding the camera? Yes, and she realizes she's committed she to can't this documentary. Look. Right. She she is committed, fully committed. She um, does the dedicated. little rotated screen where you can flip the screen around so you and can then see. see what's behind yeah. you, and she walks backwards. Right, yeah. and and hoping, and I'm thinking, can't the creature 
creature just go in front of her and then bam, you know? No. No, right? This creature who can apparently do everything <laughs> else cannot get in so front of a camera. So she only stares at this camera um, and she just walks slowly behind, at least just backwards, and you, you see a couple glimpses of the creature, which is kind of freaky too, so... That's what I liked about this movie is because you finally get to see it. Yeah. In a way. Um, and then she hears a voice from James. Right? And then it's the same exact verbiage that he says before he gets taken away by this creature is, I'm sorry, right? I am so sorry, Lisa. And then she turns around and boom. So, you know? Yeah. And that's essentially the end of the movie. The thing that is so aggravating is because... As the insane. audience, you realize that it's so obviously a trick to get uh, her to yeah. turn around because it's not like he says, hey, it's okay to turn around. I'm safe. He literally, so. it's almost like the Blair Witch held up a tape recorder of what he had just said prior. Yeah. And rather than putting them together and thinking, you know what, this is just an attempt to get me to look at her, she quickly turns around and is killed. Like, just And that's like the that. movie. That's and, it. Yep. That's There's the Blair Witch Project. No. <laughs> I feel like this is a project that should be abandoned because um, how many more documentary uh, teams are they willing to lose to try and prove this legend? Um, because I thought the movie, despite all the things we've pointed out, and some of these things I didn't think about until we started talking about them today, um, I thought the movie was... The way I put it to you after we saw it is that if you took the first Blair Witch movie mm -hmm. and you took this one and you kind of mixed both of them together, you have one good movie. As it is, they're both just okay. You know, the first movie, especially if you're watching it for the first time in the year 2016, Which it's not going to scare you. It's not going to scare you. I mean, there's some scary parts, but you've seen it all done better by now. It's like... The influence that the movie had, it's hard to recapture watching it this many years later. You almost had to have watched it with no influence at the beginning to get impacted by it. But since the documentary scary horror film genre is its own thing, so if you've seen any of the paranormal activities or anything like that, that was based off the Blair Witch Project. It's not super scary. This one, I thought, added a lot more interesting elements to the Blair Witch Project. But it, again, isn't super scary. It just... It feels like a better version of the first movie, and you just wish that they could just kind of smash the two of them together, and, and you'd have one decent one. You know? And they added more stuff from the myth. Yeah. Like Lane, for example. Yeah. Lane kind of took on the whole persona of the the guy who, Rustin Parr, right? Rustin yeah, Parr that's true. And went crazy that. and was killing people, so he was mentioning, like, she's making me do this. So it, they they had more elements than they did the first movie. But then again, they could have had all this stuff branch off after the movie came out, the original came out, and they could have added more elements later on. So I can't say that they didn't have it in the first movie because that could have just been added on to this myth later on, which then became this movie and adding those elements. So I can't really say that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd say overall it's... Uh, if you were to rate it. How many? Uh, how many? Out, out, of of five out, stars, out of five stars, right? If you were to rate this movie, uh, that's a tough one. I would say I, I'll be generous and say I give it a three. I was gonna say three, not because it's scary or anything, but it's one of those movies that I I still enjoyed watching it. I don't know if I'd enjoy it as much if I saw it at home versus seeing it in the theater because I think it's one of those movies that's even though it's it's not super great, it's still it's it's a good theater experience experience i probably would give it a two if i was watching it at home because there's just something about sitting on your couch watching this movie that takes away any of the any of the possible suspense and the, the scariness that it gives you when you're in the theater um, so i'd say if you have to see it or if you're really interested in seeing it theater is the best place um but i, I mean, feel like that applies to every scary movie though well that is true but there are some scary movies that i still watch at home that still freak me out you yeah, know, you okay. watch The Conjuring. It's still a scary movie. Um, Ooh, yeah, I know. We should do a podcast. Yeah, we should on that. do that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> getting ideas, um, but uh, still a scary movie. This one is, is I think, best experience in the theater. But uh, we welcome comments, debates, corrections, rants, raves, and compliments. Yeah. Do we have anything else? I think that's no, it. No, I think that's it. All right. Well. 
stay tuned for our next one whenever we get around to it. Ta-ta. Right. Bye.